the program that we have today, I know that we have a few people that have registered. It's called Recycling of Used Motor Oil and Filters. It is a simple guide on um, recycling of used motor oil, and this is specifically for do-it-yourself oil changers. We're gonna be talking about things oil, all things oil during this hour. As I said at the beginning, my name is Hugo Mata. I work with Soluna Arich Solutions, and my agency actually works on behalf of Zero Waste uh, Sonoma to promote the proper recycling of used motor oil and filters here in Sonoma County. The, uh, the program itself is brought to you thanks to Zero Waste Sonoma. Uh, and uh, it's, this is the agency norm, formerly known as uh, uh, Sonoma County Waste Management Agency. If you have any questions about recycling in general, if you have any questions about the program, etc., you could visit zerowastesonoma.gov or you could also send them an email to zero waste sonoma at sonoma county.org or you can also call them at this number which is now famous and a lot of people know it it's 707-565-DESK 707-565-3375 the program itself is funded by um, cal recycle which encourages the recycling of used motor oil and filters throughout the state it's good to know that so that we know where the money comes from, how we need to recycle the oil, and all of that information that, that we have. Let me go ahead and move this little window a little bit more higher so that it doesn't get on the way of the presentation. And with that said, thank you so much for staying with us. We have a whole hour. As I said, we'll be talking about oil, all things oil in uh, Sonoma County. The agenda that we have for today is we're gonna be talking about the waste stream. It's really important to know what ends up in the garbage. There's so many different things in there that include household hazardous waste uh, toxics. So it's important to know what's in there so that we can do a better job when it comes to recycling. Uh, we're gonna be talking about the recycling of used motor oil and filters, how to handle them, uh, how the program works, etc. We're also gonna be talking about the recycling options for recycling the used motor oil and filters that we generate. We're also gonna talk about the different things that we can remember. Uh, because sometimes there's things that are so uh, right there in front of us and then we forget. So we're gonna remember some of those things. Uh, we're also gonna talk about the oil change frequency. I know that um, for the most part, there's myths that we have where we usually change the oil every 3000 miles. Um, it's either by culture or um, because somebody in the family has done it every 3000 miles. So therefore we change it every so often, but there's different things that we could do and you'll be surprised uh, on, on the amount of miles that you can go before you do the oil change. Uh, also, we'll be talking about the cleaning uh, of spills if spills do happen. Uh, we're gonna be talking about the resources and also questions that you might have during this presentation. Again, if you have any questions whatsoever, go to the chat uh, right at the bottom of this page, of Zoom page and write your questions. We'll be reading those at the end of the presentation. The uh, waste stream in Sonoma County, uh, as you can see this pie chart, the biggest waste that ends up in the landfill, as a matter of fact, is actually comp uh, organic material. A lot of people, unfortunately, put their yard waste or food waste in the garbage when it could actually be separated. And 1% of all of things that go into the garbage is actually hazardous. This includes the used motor oil, some of it. So it's really, really important that we separate that and we put it in the right place. In this case, there's three options and we'll be talking about those three options where you can recycle the used motor oil conveniently for free and uh, it will uh, actually help us keep the environment uh, healthy and our uh, water sources healthy. So it's really, really important to know that um, this uh, pie chart actually uh, shows, uh, or ch in a way shows the character characterization study that was done in 2014. The county uh, actually does one every once in a while just to find out what goes into the landfill. And it's important to, to look at this uh, in a way that is kind of objective because um, not everybody actually puts everything into the garbage. There's people that do, do it right. There's people that don't do it right. There's people that forget things and then they end up putting it in the garbage. So it's different things. 
that uh, uh, we all can do. So not everyone, not, not everyone does uh, the same thing. So really important to do that. So when it comes to recycling, for the most part, I'm sure that you're familiar with these three containers. We have the blue, we have the green, and then we have the, uh, the, the, the either gray or black. Those uh, uh, containers are actually the ones that we use to uh, either recycle, compost, or uh, solid waste. So let's begin with the first one, which is the recyclables container. It's blue, and that actually gives us the idea that everything that we are going to recycle, it's going to be uh, ready for us to, to be recycled. At the same time, um, when we have the recyclables, obviously we're making more space for uh, uh, the solid waste, which is gonna be less if we start recycling more and more. So the next one will be the solid waste, which, you know, the smaller your container, that means that you're recycling more, and also you're composting more, which is the green bin. We do encourage people every once in a while to kind of do a, 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 an inventory in your family, you know, to know what are we recycling? What are we composting? What is solid waste? At the end, if you have the smallest container, you'll be saving some money though, because you're paying money for the, for, for the uh, solid waste. So the bigger your container, the more money you pay. And then in Sonoma County, we have a really, really cool program where you can get your oil and your filters collected on the curb, which is this uh, right here. It's a very, very easy way to dispose of your used motor oil. It's a free service. It's part of your collection service. All you have to do is call your garbage company. Um, we have three in Sonoma County. So you either uh, call Recology, which is uh, the one that serves most of the county. Then you have two other ones, the one that serves Windsor and the other one that serves um, the town of Sonoma. You can order your container so that you can put the oil after you change it. And they will also give you the filter back so that you can put the filter and they will collect it, uh, which is, uh, as I said, it's a really easy way to uh, dispose of the oil in a way that is proper, that is not going to harm the environment. And uh, it's actually very convenient. All you have to do is put it right on the curve. You can see the space between the three containers. They usually recommend that you have at least two feet between them. So when it comes to the filter and the, uh, um, the filter bag and also the oil, make sure that they're visible. Don't put it behind the container and put it in between because sometimes they will not be able to see it. The driver is always looking out for this. So what they're recommending is, you, is that you call them ahead. So if you have your garbage collection on Tuesdays, then you call them on uh, Mondays then they will go ahead and pick up the filter and the oil uh, the day that you have your collection service. So uh, it's just a little bit uh, of work that we need to do, but all you have to do is call them. Uh, when it comes to the oil and filters, they come from different sources. It could either be that you have a car. Actually, this is a beautiful car. I would like to have a car like that. Either you have a truck. You could also have a motorcycle, a second motorcycle. Um, you have a boat. Uh, sometimes we have... Uh, smaller uh, machinery like uh, lawnmower, or you have other machineries that you use at home. All of those use oil, and they do have a filter. So either one of those that you have, when you change it, we do not want, want, want to see the oil or the filters in the garbage, in the recycling bin, or in any other area. They need to be recycled. You have not finished the job until the oil and the filter have been recycled properly. When it comes to used motor oil, oil is actually very valuable. Uh, the re refined oil uh, that we can reuse over and over again only uses one third of the energy used to make oil from crude oil. Just imagine this, they need to subtract it from the ground and they need to refine it. They need to add a lot of additives, etc., so that we can have oil. But if we recycle the oil that we are getting out of the car, all they need to do is refine it and then it could be reused. We will save about 1.3 million barrels of oil a day if all the waste oil generated in the United States is here. It's uh, re refined. So it's a very valuable material, very valuable uh, liquid that um, unfortunately a lot of it because of, um, I don't know, sometimes accidents or people forget that it is recyclable it ends up in um, contaminating our water. 
Use motor oil is also hazardous. So that is, that's why it's really important for us to remember that uh, it should never be put into the garbage, the recycling bin, the compost bin, or dumped into the storm drains because it will seep into the ground water and it will contaminate it. It's estimated that about 40% of the pollution in America's waterways is actually from used motor oil. Think about it. People that change their own motor oil that uh, don't know how to recycle it or where to recycle it, they might dispose of it <clears throat> in uh, the garbage or someplace. So that's gonna contaminate our water. But also uh, when people don't check if there's any leaks on the motor of the, uh, the car. Think about how many cars are on the streets today. If some of those cars are leaking some of that oil, that oil is gonna be on the roads. And when it rains, all of that uh, oil is gonna be sipped into the waterways and that's how the contamination happens. One oil change, which is about one gallon of oil, more or less, contaminates or can contaminate uh, an oil slick of about six football fields. So it's really, really, really big. At the same time, one oil change can contaminate about one million gallons of water, which is estimated the amount of water that uh, 50 people can use in one year. This is uh, potable water. So a single oil change makes a huge impact. Now think about this. If we have one car and that oil doesn't get recycled properly, it will contaminate the water for 50 people. Think about those families that have two cars or have three cars. So it's, it, it can create an impact that it's uh, visible and later on we're actually gonna see it. So it's really important to recycle the used motor oil. The filters themselves can hold up to a quarter. So it's really important to recycle the filter too because uh, more often than not, people change the oil they recycle the oil, but then they forget the filter and they put it somewhere. Use motor oil and filters, it's actually very easy to recycle as well. You could take it to one of the oil recycling centers that we have in uh, Sonoma County. You could also put it on the curve, as I said at the beginning, so your garbage collection company can pick it up on your regular uh, garbage collection. And they also are collected on the Household Hazardous Waste Facility, which we have here in Sonoma County. For those of you, a lot of people know it as the dump. <laughs> it's on 500 Micham Road here in Petaluma. And uh, as you go into the dump, there's a big building right on your right side that says HHW Facility. So it will be very easy to find. And it's actually very convenient though. Unless you live in Cloverdale, you live in, in Hillsborough, Windsor, there's other options and we'll talk about those too, uh, where you could recycle it. So uh, it's really, really important to remember that. Now, when it comes to recycling the use of motor oil, recycling is the only legal way to do it. Um, don't forget the filters, so otherwise there's going to be fines that you might have to end up paying. And when it comes to the filters, there's many types. Obviously, it all depends on the type of car that you have. You might have a smaller car, so the filter could be smaller, or you could have an 18-wheeler and you do the oil change there. In that case, those filters are huge. The filter itself can actually hold up to one or two gallons of oil, just that big. So it's, it's, it's really uh, important to remember and know which kind of filters you have. And I'm sure that I'm, in a way, preaching to the choir, many of you actually change the oil yourself, so you know what I'm talking about, more or less. Um, but uh, I will definitely love to hear the, the questions and all the stuff. I haven't done the oil change in my car for almost five years now, because I have a newer model. But before that, I used to do it all the time. So I'm familiar with a car that usually holds about one gallon of uh, used motor oil. I'm sure that many of you might have a bigger car. Maybe you have two cars, et cetera, and you have a system that works for you. So again, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to uh, push the wire, I'm just the information that we have for, for, for the county. So um, there's many types, but uh, what we recommend is that you have to res uh, drain the filter really well. Because uh, as I said before, the filter itself can hold up to a quarter of oil. Uh, and usually, in my experience, it drains better when you drain it right after you change it because the oil is still warm, it's still hot, and it, it, it drips really, really quick. Uh, make sure that it is upside down, obviously. 
And uh, once you're done, you can actually recycle it. Uh, as I said, there's many collection centers in the county. Uh, you could put it in a recycle, uh, in, in a plastic bag to be recycled. Make sure that that bag is one of those Ziploc bags so it doesn't uh, spill any oil when you're carrying the, the filter to the recycling center. And uh, remember that it is illegal to put it in the trash. You cannot put it in the recycling bin either or uh, dump it anywhere. And when I come, when, when I talk about dumping, let me go ahead and, and show you this graphic right here. So we have the oil and uh, all of these different things that I'm gonna mention are things that in the past people have actually done. We do a lot of community outreach in uh, Sonoma County. Maybe some of you have seen us at uh, different uh, uh, health fairs, uh, the Wednesday night market, uh, farmers markets in general, the DMB, different places. So when we are um, providing this information, we usually ask people, so have you changed the oil in your car? What have you done with the oil? And many of them have uh, gave, gave us, they have given us different answers that, although they might seem uh, a little bit out there, it is a reality. Some people actually do that with us. For example, we have asked, what are you doing with the oil? Uh, some people have told us that they have put it in the garbage um, and they do the same thing with the filter. They have also told us that they can uh, sometimes put it in the storm drain. Uh, a person many years ago told us that he saw somebody parked in the car right next to the uh, storm drain. He actually changed the oil right there, the, the oil drain onto the storm drains, put the screw back on, put the oil, and he did the oil change. Either one of these things is illegal, it's going to contaminate our water, our ground, and there's also the possibility that you can get a fine. So you cannot do any of those. You cannot also put it in the landscapes. Uh, there's um, some people that have answered, well, uh, I dig the hole uh, on my backyard or somewhere and just dispose of it right there. Or somebody uh, told us once that he dig a hole really close to a tree that he, he wanted to kill and he just kept dumping the oil in there. So that is illegal. It is um, really, really uh, toxic and it's going to contaminate our water. And the other thing is that we have our dependence of water here, or our, our main water source in Sonoma County is the Russian River. So um, it's really important that none of this oil gets or makes its way over there. So it's really, really important to remember that it's not good to put in there because it's, it's going to be contaminating our water, but at the same time, it's illegal and you could get fines. The only uh, legal way, proper way, to recycle the used motor oil is to take it to a uh, recycling center. And, you know, it's mainly in, in the county. You could also take it to the household hazardous waste facility over on Michan Road in Petaluma. And also you have curbside collection, which is really, really easy to do, very convenient, and it's free. So you cannot uh, uh, argue with that. If it's free, if it's convenient, why not do it, right? I will do it. In fact, I have done it many times. Um, when it comes to recycling the oil, we're ready to do it, right? So the first thing that we do, is drain the oil from the vehicle. We put that into the drain pan. In my experience, I usually just take the screw off, let the oil drain for at least a half hour. I leave it a half hour just to make sure that, make sure that all of the oil gets out. I know that people uh, have said, well, I go to the 10 uh, minute oil change and, and that's fine. But if you have time and you do it yourself, I will leave it for a half hour and then I will take the filter out. Uh, let it drain. Make sure that you use a drain pan that is um, big enough to hold about twice the volume of oil that usually comes out of that uh, crankcase. Um, drain the oil slow until you don't see any more drips coming out of the, uh, uh, the motor. At that point, and this is really, really important, you get the screw back, put it in there. There's been many stories of people telling us that when they're done changing the oil, they do forget to, be, to put the, uh, the plug back in. They put the oil and the oil starts, uh, you know, uh, dripping. So uh, it's a, a really dumb step, if you will, but a lot of people forget it. So just go ahead and put the, uh, the, uh, the, the drain plug back in into the motor so that you don't have any spills that you were not uh, thinking that would happen. Then at that point, uh, you put the oil into the drain pan. Um, you get the drain pan and then you put it in a, a sealable container so that you can have it ready for recycling. 
this is at the time where you can actually call uh, the Ecodesk number, which is 707-565-3375, or you could visit uh, zerowaysonoma.gov to get uh, um, the list of all of the different centers or the different options, because it's really, really easy to, to forget even when we have the information there. So when it comes to the container, make sure that you use a container in this case, provided by your garbage collection company, if you want to collect it on the curb. If you are going to take the oil yourself physically, then we recommend that you use a clean, uh, uh, leak-proof container, preferably uh, one of those uh, containers that has a screw top so that you can screw it on. Um, Sonoma County uh, um, has the, the, two hold, the three holders that can give you the container that is exactly like this. It has a screw top. But if you take it to a recycling center, you use your own. Make sure that that container is completely clean, completely dry, and doesn't have any other uh, fluids. Because um, uh, the centers and also the curbside pickup, they do not accept any contaminated oil. The only place that you will take the contaminated oil will be to the household hazardous waste facility. This is really, really important to remember, though, because uh, uh, once that gallon is contaminated and it goes into the big container, uh, their big tanks, then the whole thing will be contaminated and uh, it's very expensive to prevent something like that. So make sure that you do not mix it with anything, even water. It's really, really important. I have uh, heard stories of people uh, saying that they just changed the oil, they have it in there, and then um, in their minds, they're going to recycle it later. Later could be today could be tomorrow, it could be another day. So what they did, they just left it uh, right uh, outside the garage. And it happened that it started to rain. So now that oil is contaminated and the only place that you could take it to be um, disposed of properly will be the household hazardous waste facility. So make sure that it's not contaminated with anything. What do I do with the filters? First of all, well, don't forget them, which is one of the things that uh, we have encountered. When we ask people, when we're doing community outreach, which by the way, due to COVID-19, uh, obviously many of the, the different uh, uh, outreach events, etc., cetera, if all, all of the outreach events were canceled or postponed until next year. So we haven't really done any community outreach that way. That's the way we're doing um, this virtual uh, presentation. During those filter, uh, those uh, community fairs, uh, Zero Waste Sonoma has this really cool tool, which is a filter drainer that looks something like this, and we'll talk about it right now, because there is, uh, when one door closes, another one opens, and we're offering these uh, for free for those who want them. But if you have this filter drainer, you just put the drainer there for about 24 hours. Um, then after that, you can put it in the uh, Ziploc bag so that you can take it to one of the um, different centers or get it collected on the curve, or take it to the household hazardous waste facility. Make sure that when you put it in this bag, the bag is sealable, so it doesn't uh, um, have any spills or anything like that. So I was talking about this fertile drainer, which is really, really cool. It's provided by Zero Waste Sonoma. Um, we have curbside, um, I'm sorry, we have uh, um, delivery of this filter drainer to your home, all you have to do is call uh, um, uh, the helpline, which is uh, Ecodesk. Uh, you could call 707-565-3375. And what we're going to do, we're going to deliver this really, really cold container to your home. You don't even have to be at home. You don't have to open the door. Um, you call the number. We will write down your information we will deliver the container, the filter drainer, which is uh, really, really, really sturdy, very nice. It has a nice screw top. Um, it helps you bring more oil, especially with a filter. And as, again, we recommend that you, uh, you drain it for about 24 hours. And it also reduces mess, which is really, really important. So here's the number where you could call us. And during this uh, COVID-19 uh, shelter in place situation, we definitely recommend that you order as of today, we have delivered about 65 of those filter drainers in Sonoma County, and uh, the numbers keep going. So hopefully you are one of those people that uh, wants one, and we could definitely deliver it to your home through um, Zero Waste Sonoma. 
Um, with that said, the other option for recycling of used motor oil is uh, recycling centers. In Sonoma County, we have about 50, 50 centers. And many of these centers could be the stores that sell the used motor oil, uh, the oil, not the, not the used motor oil, but that sell the motor oil filters or auto parts in general. It could also be a, a local mechanic. It could be a dealership. It could also be uh, one of those 10 minute oil change places. Um, it's a very convenient place and there's more than 50 of them. They take up to five gallons of uh, used motor oil and uh, many of them, they take up to two filters. But we recommend that you call them ahead of time to find out exactly what, uh, they, uh, what they collect, etc. And again, you cannot take the oil to these centers uh, outside business hours. You need to go there during uh, regular hours. You could uh, visit um, .gov or call the number again for um, the address, the phone number. And um, as I said, we recommend that you call them ahead of time so that you can find all of this information. Um, because the, as I said, recycling or use more oil and filters, the only legal ways to dispose of them uh, um, in a way that is, uh, uh, that prevents any spills and uh, these centers will actually do that. Uh, Zero Waste Sonoma and other participating businesses offer this service for free. So you will not have to pay anything when you bring it in. It's a method that is convenient. Um, and after you collected the oil uh, in that container, make sure that you take it to one of the centers. I was just telling you about that Ziploc bag where you can put the filter and then take it to a center. But if you have the filter drainer that I was talking about, you don't even have to transfer it to a bag. What you do, you have the filter in that, in that uh, uh, filter drainer, the black one that we were just looking at on the previous uh, slide. You can take that. You could also take your used motor oil already, and then you go to our recycling center. They will receive the oil, empty your container. They will receive the filters and give you those two containers back so that you can reuse them over and over again. Uh, that's the beauty of, of this program, that you can reduce many of these different things. Um, as I said, in Sonoma County, we have about 50 different centers, and it is a free program, up to five gallons per visit. Uh, when you go to the centers, you're going to actually find this uh, sign that you will see here. This sign, it's on the windows right at the entrance, and it's basically telling you this is one of those centers that receives oil from the public. The next one is curbside pickup, which uh, we've been talking about it. Your garbage collection company can um, definitely give you more information uh, on how to uh, pick it up. But if you don't have your, the phone number for your holder or you don't know who your collection company is, just call uh, um, uh, Zero Waste Sonoma at 565-3375 or visit the website and you will be able to find which holder serves your, uh, your, the area where you live, how the program works, how to order this container. And uh, the beautiful thing about it is that they will collect the oil. Once you have the container in there and the filter, they will take them, but then they will leave you an empty container and also a plastic bag for you to recycle the oil again. So if you do the oil change every month, if you have several cars and you change the oil every week, then uh, you could definitely take advantage of this program, which is easy, it's convenient, and it's also part of your service. But this is only offered for uh, single home uh, uh, families. It's not for multifamily complexes. If you live in an apartment, this service does not apply to you. You do not have this service. It's only if you live, if you live in a home, okay? It's really important to remember that because uh, if you live in an apartment, you will not get your oil collected. Um, when you call your garbage company, they'll give you this container. And uh, sometimes they will actually let you use a container that you have. But again, it needs to be clean. It needs to be uh, dry. And when you put the screw top on, we also recommend that you put some tape in it so it doesn't uh, get any spills. But the best way to do it is uh, call your garbage company directly so that they can give you more details or call Ecodesk and they will give you the information that you need for uh, um, in this case, how to get a container, instructions on how to do it, and uh, any other stuff that you might need. The household hazardous waste facility that we have in Sonoma County, 
maybe uh, maybe maybe when you look at this picture it's familiar to you it's a really really cool service i have to say during the covid uh, 19 crisis they still remain open uh, two days a week and they have been receiving a, a lot of the toxics that our community has so uh, it's, it's really important to remember that this service is being offered following those guidelines of you know uh, social distance and uh, the mask and all of that stuff it's really really important because we're, we want to keep everyone safe everyone healthy so the household hazardous waste facility is usually open from thursday through saturday 6 30 i mean 7 30 until 2 30 p.m but because of COVID, right now it's only open two days i do recommend that you give them a call ahead give them a call at this number so that they can uh, give you more information on the times the uh, the amounts of oil that they can take or any other household hazardous waste that you can collect what i can tell you now it's uh when you drive into this uh, uh facility the recommendation is that you have your toxics in this case oil in a box and then you put it in the trunk of your car or at the back of your car the attendants will not take any of your uh, household hazardous waste from inside your car so if you have it on the front seat or the back seat they will not get close to that because of the COVID-19 they, they are not allowed to open those 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 doors so what we recommend is when you come into there you have your mask you're in your car you open the trunk preferably it's already open by the time you arrive um, once you get really close to the facility and it's your turn uh, you have it already open so that they can just come in and take them from you okay it's really really important this any toxics including oil that you have inside your car the front seat or the back seat that is not allowed they will not open it and they will not collect it for you you are not allowed to get out of the car either so just make sure that you have it on the trunk they take a maximum of 15 gallons of any used motor oil and no more than 125 pounds of any solids so the beautiful thing about uh, the household hazardous waste facility is that uh, they take other things, not just motor oil. Let's say that you have fluorescent light bulbs, you have batteries, you also have paint. What about uh, thinners? Uh, some household cleaners that we have and we don't need anymore. Uh, you might have pesticides, herbicides, or uh, things that you use in the in, in the garden. Uh, again, they will take either no more than 15 gallons of a, a, a liquid or no more than 125 pounds of any solids per vehicle. It's very, very important to remember this. And this is per visit, all right? So when you arrive there, just make sure that you have that in mind. If you have any questions, again, just visit zerowastesonoma.gov or call the number for the Household Hazardous Waste Facility, 707-565. 3387. Uh, so there you have those three different places. One, you could go to the Household Hazardous Waste Facility. Two, you could take it to one of the more than 50 uh, certified collection centers in Sonoma County, or you could also get your used motor oil collected on the curve. With that said, then uh, other automotive uh, liquids that you could bring in there include the antifreeze. Uh, there's uh, two kinds. One that is propylene glycol, uh, we usually, uh, that's the one that we recommend because um, uh, the one that people use right now is ethylene glycol. So uh, the propylene glycol is less toxic. So make sure that you think about that when you're uh, using it for your car. And that is also recyclable at the household hazardous waste facility. Uh, fluid is another thing that um, you could take in there. Uh, transmission, uh, transmission fluid, um, fuel uh, oil mixes that you use for different uh, machinery at home. Same thing with solvents and uh, degreasers and any contaminated oil. Really, really important to remember. Contaminated oil, you have to take it to the household hazardous waste facility. Then how often do you have to change the oil though? Because I, I was uh, uh, talking about this at the beginning. There is this myth that you have to change it every 3,000 miles. When in reality, um, what we recommend people doing is actually checking the manufacturer's recommendation some cars can actually go up to 10,000 10, miles or many uh, go up to 12,000 miles. I can actually put my car as an example. Uh, I do change the oil in my car every uh, 12,000 miles. 
but we do recommend that you check that manufacturer's recommendation and check, make sure that there's oil in the motor, of course. So here's a few examples of some cars that uh, can go up to uh, more than 3,000 miles. For example, let's talk about a Focus um, 2007 for Focus. This one can actually go up to 5,000 miles. Just right there, you know, when you change it every 3,000 miles, you're, uh, you will save money because it actually runs almost double the miles that you were using. For a Chevy 2006, Chevy Impala, you can go up to 7,500 miles. So that myth, I mean, it could save you some money on the, on the, on the, on the long run as well. And then we have Mustang. Uh, I actually used to have one of these cars many years ago, and I used to change the oil every 3,000 miles because that's what I knew. But now that I know, I actually change. Um, I don't have the car anymore, but now that I know, I usually wait until the recommendations uh, from my manufacturer, uh, manufacturer. The other one, this one goes up to 5,000 miles. And then this one, which is the Jetta um, 2009. This one is a, it's an interesting one because I have a couple of friends that they tell me, they have one of these cars, and they told me, I change it every 3,000 miles, be, miles because my dad used to change it every 2,000 miles. My brother used to change it every 2,000 miles. And I started doing the same thing because that is like the norm. And then when I, when I told them about it, they, uh, they were really surprised that, um, you know, you don't have to wait that long. You could go up to 10,000 miles on this car, not, not 3,000 miles. So just here, you can save three oil changes, two oil changes, and then you could save some money in there. One thing that I do recommend, though, is that you check the oil levels in the car. I usually check it once a week. It doesn't matter how many miles I drive. I usually check it once a week just to make sure that it's uh, on the levels that I want it. And the other recommendation too is that you check the tires on the car. If you check the tires on the car, if you check the oil in the car or other uh, uh, fluids in the car as recommended, you'll be surprised at how uh, many miles you can go with your car. So just, just that. And again, many of you already changed the oil. Many of you might be mechanics and you know all of this information. But that the myth, I just wanted to remind people about it because uh, it's all about checking the recommendations. It is all a myth, $3,000 no more. Uh, some important things to remember, <clears throat> that used motor oil needs to be recycled because um, if people dispose of it illegally or you uh, dispose of it illegally and dump it somewhere, the fines can be up to $10,000. Actually, that's a pretty big number. Uh, oil and filters must be taken to the, uh, uh, one of the recycling centers but you have to remember that they need to be open. You cannot just come in uh, in the middle of the night, leave it right at the entrance, because that is considered illegal dumping, and you could also get fined. Recycling of used motor oil filters is really easy, it's convenient, and please remember, it's free. You will not be charged when you take the oil, unless you are a business. If you are a business, a mechanic business, etc., and you are generating big amounts of oil, then you have to uh, get it collected by a specific service. Uh, and, and if you visit zerowaysonoma.gov, you will get information on how to, how to get that. Um, never uh, res, uh, mix the oil with any other uh, fluids, and this includes water. Um, the collection centers, when you bring your oil, they can take up to five gallons per visit and up to two filters, but make sure that you call them ahead. The household hazardous waste facility takes up, up to 15 gallons of any liquid and no more or no more than 125 pounds of any solids. And uh, make sure that when you go to the toxic facility, again, you have all of your um, household hazardous waste on the trunk or the back of your truck. Uh, make sure that you call them before you bring them in there and then you get all of the information that you, <clears throat> that you need. Another thing to remember is um, the collection, uh, the uh, certified collection centers will not take any contaminated oil. You have to take it to the household hazardous waste facility. The businesses that participate as uh, certified collection centers for used motor oil and filters, uh, they are part of a program uh, for Cal Recycle, and they usually offer 40 cents per gallon, like an incentive. When you bring a gallon of used motor oil, they will give you a store credit usually for 40 cents. So if you change the oil today, you bring in your oil, your filter, I will ask for those 40 cents when you buy the next filter or more oil. 
and they will give you that discount. So why not do it, right? I mean, it's, it's free, it's 40 cents. Like, otherwise, we'll go to waste if you do not uh, uh, claim them. Um, there's a lot of different resources on Zero Waste on Oma that will give you more information uh, when you visit the website. And two things to remember too, is Zero Waste on Oma can give you the filter drainer for free. And also one of those oil rags to clean up any spills. And when we talk about spills, we have to make sure that we cover uh, um, all of the drains. If somebody changes the oil close to one, make sure that you cover it so that oil doesn't make uh, its way there. Uh, use a, a, a drip hands under the areas where you're gonna be working. Um, make sure that you clean all of the parts that are gonna be wet with oil. That includes the filter, make sure that you drain it. It also includes uh, any uh, tools that you might have used. Make sure that you get all the oil out. And uh, use a funnel, especially when you're gonna transfer the oil from your uh, drain pan onto the container to take it to a recycling center. For that, you actually, uh, I, I do recommend that you have like a secondary containment where you can put a container ready to uh, pour the other oil. So if by any accident there's a spill, that spill is, is going to be contained on that secondary containment. It traps the oil so there isn't a, a further spill in there. If a spill do, do happens, uh, you have to store uh, the source as soon as possible. Many stories could be that you pour the oil in a container that had a hole in it. So then you have oil coming out of it. So make sure that you block uh, the source so that there isn't any more oil coming out. Obviously cover the drains so it doesn't make its way over there and block the flow that you want to do. And you want to absorb all of that oil that is part of the spill and store and dispose of all of the absorbents that you used uh, when you were changing the oil. And these absorbents, they come in different ways. Uh, you could use paper towels, for example. Um, I know that a lot of people have a lot of paper towels and they cannot leave without paper towels and that's fine. But uh, if you use them, uh, obviously we ask people to get all that oil. But if those paper towels are very saturated with oil, we usually ask people to squeeze as much of the oil as possible into the drain pan so that you can recycle it. But if the oil is still there, what we recommend is that you um, put the oil, uh, the, uh, the uh, paper towels saturated with oil in a Ziploc bag, and then you can take those to the household hazardous waste facility. That is the only way to dispose of them. If it's just a little bit of oil or three drips or whatever, then you can dispose of it in, in the garbage. But if it's completely saturated, you have to take it to a household hazardous waste facility. Other things that you could use for um, cleaning up uh, uh, oil spills could also be those towels that, that are made out of cloth. Uh, those chopper racks are very, very uh, popular, especially with the mechanics and, and people that change their own motor oil. Nowadays, you can have an old rag, uh, you could have an old t-shirt that doesn't work anymore. You could just cut it into one piece and then you can use it. You could also get uh, uh, an old sock, I don't know, something like that. And as I said, uh, Zero Waste Sonoma is actually providing one of those uh, chop racks for free uh, when you order a free delivery of the filter drainer. It will give you one as well as the list of all of the different centers where you could go to. Um, this chop towel is actually, a chop cloth, is actually a, a better alternative to paper. And uh, Depending if you have a big amount of them, you could use a commercial laundry service. Many of them do have this service where you could bring them in and they can be washed. I do not recommend, however, that you wash this uh, uh, chop towel with your regular clothes because you know, you're gonna have oil all over your washer and all over the clothes. I mentioned this because it has happened. Some people have actually done that. So I don't want you to, to go to all of that trouble. If that rag is too saturated with oil, just as you did with the paper towels, you will put it in a Ziploc bag, and then you can take it to the household hazardous waste facility on Mitcham Road, okay? Uh, if we have a spill that is bigger, and it doesn't have to be oil, it could be another fluid, then we ask you to use other absorbents. There's fluoride absorbents that you could use, like this type of sand. Um, there's many types. It could be uh, cat litter, for example, one of those. It could be one of these pillows or, or different uh, designs, etc. And they are specifically were made to absorb the oil. So there's many types of them. All depends on what you do. However, 
when they are, are saturated with oil, they might be very difficult to dispose of. You cannot put it in the garbage. You cannot put it in the uh, compost bin. You cannot put it in the recycling bin. You will have to take it to the household hazardous waste facility. Really, really important to remember that. These pillows that you see here, there's also a program uh, at different marinas here in, in Sonoma County where um, there's these pillows that people use on boats. So this pillow will be put right really close to where the, uh, the motor is. And sometimes the motor will um, drip some oil. And unfortunately, if you don't have these pillows, these oil, uh, when the water comes in, will just take the oil and you will see the oil contaminating the bay uh, or, or the area where uh, this oil is. It could be Lake Sonoma, it could be the river, it could be the areas where these boats are uh, being used. So there is a program where you could uh, <clears throat> get these pillows in those marinas. They will be put into the area where you have the motor. Then uh, the oil will go into those pillows. Water will come in, but the pillows will trap the oil. And there is an exchange of pillows. So if you go to uh, so Lake Sonoma, for example, there is a, uh, a place in there where you could bring the uh, soaked uh, pillow absorbent and then you could take a new one. So it's, it's, a, it's a really cool exchange. We do not want to see any of this oil into any uh, of our uh, water sources. It's, it's really, really important to keep it out and uh, so it doesn't contaminate our groundwater, it doesn't contaminate our water sources in general. But we'd also recommend that when you use these absorbents, you use them uh, sparingly. Uh, I, Again, I was telling you that we usually do a lot of uh, community outreach at community events, EMB places, etc. And um, people tell us a lot of stories. They might be kidding, uh, but when we ask them, so what do you do with these materials? Where do you take it, etc.? Some people were telling, uh, telling us that he uses cat litter all the time for everything. So if he has a spill of uh, interface, he will just use it. Uh, if he had a spill of this, he will just use it. So he kept using it. And when I asked him, so what do you do with this? And his answer was, I usually put it in the garbage. That is like the first thing that comes up to mind. And um, then I will ask, so how saturated was that uh, cat litter? And in many cases, he will say, you know what, it was, it absorbed all of the oil because my daughter was playing around the area when I changed the oil. So all of the oil was spilled. Then I used the cat litter and he sucked up all of that oil. And then he just put it in the garbage. So, um, I think that we have to use it sparingly, but it's, it, it all depends uh, on what you do. And the important thing here is that you cannot put it in the garbage, okay? So that, that is the message here. There's many resources in the county, so don't feel like um, you don't have help or you don't have resources. If you don't know what to do, I think it's better to ask. So Zero Waste Sonoma, the GOV, it's uh, the website for the agency. Once you go in there, you will actually find a very easy to use uh, uh, recycling guide. There's a lot of really small illustrations. It, the letters are big. I really like that because it's really big. You see the, the different graphics. And it gives you not only the, the, the areas where you could go, but it actually gives you like a map where you could go in the different centers. It gives you the phone number. It gives you information on that particular subject. Let's say that you want to know where to recycle oil. There's a whole paragraph that tells you why to recycle it, the places where you could go, etc. cetera. Uh, if you have uh, metals, if you have bulky items, if you have an old car that you want to recycle, again, it will give you information about the program, the list of all of those places, and the map where, uh, where you could go, which is, believe me, is, is really, really cool. And if you have questions that, are, that need immediate answer, if you will, you could also call Equadesk at 707-565-3375 and uh, they will answer the questions as soon as they can. So uh, don't feel like there isn't any, any answers. Also, at the same time, if you go to zerowastesonoma.gov, there's a way that you can send us an email as well, okay? This is also the number that you can call for us to give you that uh, filter drainer deliver to your home. So this is what the recycling guide would have looked like this year, um, but due to COVID, obviously we were not able to deliver these or provide these uh, different community events. The other resources that we have, um, I was just telling you that there were three garbage collections companies in, in, in the county. They are actually really good resources because they will collect the oil 
that use more oil on the filters right on the curve. So the first one is Sonoma Garbage Collectors. They provide services to uh, Sonoma only, including Creekside, Chanterelle, and Tamalek. So it's really important that you remember that. Recology will serve the rest of the county with the exception of Windsor, which you will then call, uh, call Sonoma County Recovery Resources. And uh, this one only serves uh, the area of Windsor. And if you, if you have any questions on uh, where to recycle your household hazardous waste in general, then you will take into the household hazardous waste facility. Give them a call or just visit web, the website for uh, zerowastesonoma.gov or call Ecodesk and they will give you information on all of those different things. Uh, at this time, uh, we're going to go on to questions, but before that, we also wanted to remind you that there's going to be a, uh, a web webinar just like this one, but it's, this one's going to be completely in Spanish. So if you know some people that will be interested in taking this uh, webinar, this is going to happen uh, this Saturday um, at 10 a.m. Uh, just read that is wrong, but it's, uh, it's a Saturday, June 27th. So if you know of anyone that is interested in uh, participating, again, you can just go ahead and let them know. Uh, so at this point, let's go ahead and um, answer the questions. How you go? Our HH facility is back open for regular hours. This is actually Corney, which is the person in charge of the HSW facility. So Corney, thank you so much for uh, uh, letting us, uh, giving us the opportunity to do this web uh, webinar. And she's basically telling me the good news that, uh, you know, the HSW facility is open again. Uh, it will be uh, starting now. And also there's another program which is really cool. It's called the Top Six Rubber. And uh, starting July 1st, this program is going to be available. So if people are interested in getting their household hazardous waste collected at home, you can actually get this service for a fee and, and they will go ahead and pick it up at your house. And another one, which is really, really cool. I really like to, to, to know all these different information is, is the uh, um, household hazardous waste uh, collection uh, events that happened throughout the county. During COVID, this stopped. But now it's open again. So starting uh, uh, July 1st, all of these events are going to be open, including next week in Runner Park. So if you are a Runner Park resident, it's open for you to make uh, your appointment. You come by and then they will definitely uh, collect your, uh, your use motor oil or any other toxics. Thank you so much, um, Courtney, for that question. I don't know if there's any other questions from, from the public. I know there's... Uh, uh, a couple of questions that people send me in advance. And one of them was, uh, Ugo, uh, they asked me if uh, the filter, uh, the funnels, when you go to a gas station and you use one of those paper funnels to put the oil in, in, the, um, in the motor, they will tell me if those are recyclable or those are garbage. And obviously if it's one of those paper uh, funnels and you already pour some oil in there, it is uh, going to be garbage. Now, if that funnel has a lot of oil. Again, the question is how saturated with oil it is. If it's saturated with oil, we do recommend that you put it in a Ziploc bag and then you take it to a household hazardous waste facility. So um, it all depends on um, what you have. So again, do not feel that you don't have the tools. If you have questions beyond this webinar, make sure that you call uh, um, the Ecodesk number take advantage of the filter drainer that is going to be delivered to your home. Just call the Ecodesk number at 707-565-3375 or visit the website for zerowastesonoma.gov. With that said, I don't know if there's any more questions. I want to thank you once again for uh, taking uh, part of your day to actually talk about oil of all things, which it's a passion of mine. I talk about recycling all the time, but this is a really good way to finish the day, at least for me. Thank you so much. And um, uh, I'll be, we will be posting this webinar later on on the website on uh, Zero Waste Sonoma. So make sure you stay tuned. Thank you so much. Have a good one.